Hello, greetings. We continue with the 7i96s and this time an example of a spindle control. I'll show you how the 7i96s can control such a spindle or a frequency converter. The S, i.e. 7i96s, of course, stands for spindle. Because the 7i96s has an analog output or an electronic potentiometer. I've already made a few examples with the 7i76i. There are also videos about it and that's exactly how it works here with the 7i96s I have. So still the 7i96s is still a test setup. I have a frequency converter, a spindle. Setup goes up to 24,000 RPM and with that I can show you how the speed specification works. This means that I can program a speed between 0 and 24,000 and I can change the direction of rotation all out of the program so so that you you can empathize with that too I've now linked this folder to github and if you go to my side so github tula 83 then you can see this folder here at repositories and everything I do I push it there and then you automatically have the update. You can also embed this with git clone in your Linux CNC for example, or at least the folder. Cloning, you have exactly this configuration. In addition to the configuration, I also have a documentation folder in there I have put a PDF and let's take a look at it now. Because for many it is also interesting how to link and wire the whole thing. I've described it here again. In other words, the electronic potentiometer. This makes it possible to implement speed specifications for frequency converters. Here is an excerpt from Mesa's documentation. Now you can also see that the whole thing goes from 0.5 volts to 18 volts. This electronic potentiometer. Also in negative voltage, for example. You could realize plus minus 10 volts yes the PWM signal is always 0 to 100% and if I for example now 100% 5 volts then corresponding to 0 volt 0% PWM when I'm working with minus voltage for example if I had plus minus 10 volts then 10 volts would be 100% PWM 0 volts 50% PWM and 0% PWM and 0% PWM would be minus 10 volts times on the side. But that's not what we're talking about here. I've got 0 to 5 volts here now. So 0 to 5% and we'll take a look at that in a moment. What's important is the wiring, so I have 5 volts from the frequency converter to spin plus on the TB2 and on the spin minus I have the GND. I also set the GND to 1 minus because I still need two outputs for the direction of rotation. So now I've got 5 volts in GND here and in the middle the spin is out. I have now connected this to the analog input from the frequency converter. In this case 5 volts in and depending on the case. How the PWM signal is set. More or less voltage comes out here and that's just our speed specification. As I said, forward, backward, I have here with exits connected so that I can see via Linux can switch the output and thus influence the direction of rotation so that the frequency converter does the same. So he has to react to the signals. To do this, it is necessary to simply set parameters in the frequency converter itself and every frequency converter has its own personal book, its instruction manual, and they should be studied. So my case is shown here again as a table. Important is spin out with 5 volts and because the voltage, which goes in here in spin plus and minus, the comes throttled or not throttled, just out here and makes the speed specification. But we'll see that right away, okay. In the HAL it is actually very manageable. I have one in the INI. 
parameter created by the 24,000 is this parameter. I'm putting it in here. At PWM. Generator scale. That is, I end up scaling the 0 to 100% to 0 to 24,000. Because I get my speed specification from the program via this pin or via this signal and send it to this PWM. In the end, it's always the same. That I'm trying to set the direct speed value to the output pin. So in this case here, PWM chin 00, 00 value. In order for the PWM generator to still work. In other words, it actually performs its function. It still needs an enable signal. I have now connected this with spindle enable and then the direction of rotation in each case. So you see, that's quite manageable. Here below again the explanation of it. In order that. Here you can read about it a little bit. Okay. Nevertheless, let's take a look at the machine. This means that the machine can start here. I can turn them on and I can reference them. So nothing is parameterized here except the spindle. Now and now we can. S1000. And now we see that the AC drive is active. I.e. the spindle now rotates in clockwise rotation. I could also do M4. That is, I donate, ram down and drive in the opposite direction of this ramp. So slow down and accelerate. The power of the frequency converter, the power of Linux CNC Linux. CNC just turns on hard here specification. And from. Out here would be M5. We can now make an example, 10, 12,000 RPM would be half. From the maximum speed. Then the frequency converter would have to display around 200 Hertz. Then 400 Hertz would be 24,000 revolutions. I'll do M312 S12,000 again. So, we now have 12,000 revolutions, and the frequency converter shows 2,101.78 Hz. That's totally okay. Now we can do half S6,000 again. That would be around 100 Hz. But you see, it works without any problems. As I said, the up and down ramps is done by the frequency converter itself. That's what I've set in the parameters that he took a bit of time when accelerating at braking. This could also be built into Linux PC. But why? This is where the frequency converter comes in. With then you can save yourself. But that's a rudimented control. I can do it again. That you see that I'll do M3S1000. Again of course this HF spindle can't. I can try it with 500. Yes, 500 is also possible. Still, not so low in speed. TM4. So you can see in 3 the speed changes, so the direction of rotation changes. The speed cannot be manipulated. I can also turn off the spindle with M5. Okay, that's it. So you have the example, you can try it out, or the one. Who wants to try it out? I'm now thinking about the next test setup with the 7i96s. But I'll say that a rudimentary spindle is now to be connected like this. Not that difficult with the card. Okay, then I say. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. There's subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell. So you don't miss the next video. If you want to support me additionally, then you can do that on Patreon. Yes, and then I say goodbye until the next video.